Jesus, I bless this message, Lord. I plead your blood on this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. Now, we're going to move past this already, okay? But for the new people that don't know what faith, trust, believe means, then I'm going to tell you. There's a word called believe. What does that mean? Does it mean trust? Sure. Does it mean faith? Sure. But what does it mean to believe from your heart? See, we have faith and trust and all that that come from our brain. Like, my head knows that Jesus died and rose from the dead. I, my head knows that. I believe it. Does that make me saved? Well, you hear me confessing it with my mouth. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and believe in your heart. That's where the belief has to come from, your heart, not just from your head. So your head acknowledges, yes, I know all this is true, but am I believing it with my heart? When you believe it with your heart, your life will become according to what you believe. It will become according to uh, God's word. You will start abiding in, because Jesus uses words like abide in Jesus. In, understand that word. A walk in Jesus. He'll say be a doer of the word. A doer, not just a hearer. Hearers just hear the word. They hear about Jesus and they acknowledge him, yes. But a doer does what his word tells you to do. Okay, let me explain this to you. You've got salvation that comes the minute that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you do that not just from your head and your mouth, but with your heart. All right, the minute you accept Jesus as your Savior, you're saved. Okay, you just became a branch on a tree. Jesus keeps talking about you're a branch. You just became a branch on that tree and meant you say, yes, I give for Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Save my soul. Forgive me. Save my soul. All these people just became branches on that tree. Now that you've done that, now you have to get sanctified. It means that you are made and you are, you now just became righteous. Even though you're still all up in sin. You just became righteous the minute you asked Jesus to save you. Now you be righteous. Okay? You start doing the things the Word of God tells you to do. It's called obeying God's commandments. Okay? And I told you, those Ten Commandments, you can take one of those commandments and split it up in many directions. Okay? And you're like, well, I'm not under the law. Well, you're not under the old covenant law. You're still under the law. But you're under it with a new covenant. That is Jesus Christ. Because when Jesus came on this earth, he took, he had to abide by the law. He did. And when he died, he took all the law into himself and all your sins into himself. And now it is all through Jesus. We don't ignore God's commands because Jesus died on the cross. He didn't make it so that we ain't got nothing to do. We got a lot to do, y'all. We got a lot to do because the minute you get saved, now you got to get sanctified. And in the minute you get saved, really saved, you will get sanctified. So if you're not sanctified, you're not saved because getting saved will lead to the next step of sanctification, meaning become the new you. If you never became the new you, then you never really did step one anyway. It was all from your head. It was all from your head. Okay. So, as you abide in God's word, like he tells you to, Jesus said, if you really love me, a lot of people out there say they love me, a lot of people, but if you really love me, you will abide in me, you will obey me, you will keep my commandments, he's word like keep, you will keep my commandments, just simple, straight up as you can get, when you keep his commandments, okay, if you, uh, when you help the, the needy, you got a fruit on your tree. When you forgive someone who hurts you, you got a fruit on your tree. When you help God's kingdom, your church, you got fruit on your tree. Okay, the more you do of God's work, the more fruit you get on your tree, symbolically speaking. Now, what's the purpose of these fruits? Being a doer, good works, 
sanctification, whatever you want to call it, because you have experience. You can help somebody else out there. You have a testimony that testifies of the one who's helping you, Jesus Christ. These branches right here, they got saved, but they didn't read the Bible. They certainly ain't going to keep God's commandments because that's old covenant law. They ain't going to do that. So they don't have nothing. They're not doing anything. There's nothing on their tree, y'all. God said those branches that do nothing, they're not worth nothing. Spiritually, he will break them off and burn them up. What are they good for? Nothing. These branches will help somebody else. Love God with all your heart, soul, body, mind. And number two, love other people. So you're here for a reason. Now, we have works to do. I'm going to tell you that straight up. Yes, you got works to do. It's called sanctification. Okay? And we do works. We got a lot of works. But we don't do them to earn anything for us. We do these works because we owe it to Jesus Christ. We owe him a debt, y'all. We owe it to him. Okay? So he's like, all you got to do is come to me, all you that labor. Come to me. Accept me. Now, let me change you into this new person that's just like Jesus Christ. You got stuff to do. Okay? It's called being sanctified. So if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, or you think you have, okay, with your mouth, and you're not obeying God's commandments because you don't believe in them, or there it's old stuff, doesn't we don't do that today? And I ain't got to do this and that for God. I ain't got to do nothing. Well, you never gave your life to Jesus Christ. You are not saved. I can tell you that straight up. I know you don't like it. It is what it is. I'm alive on this earth today for a word, believe. He said, my people do not know what it means to believe. That's what he said. And now that I'm teaching it, I see it. I see it all over the place. I see it. See, you don't do, we got works to do. Matter of fact, the Bible says your faith that you say you have without works is dead. It's not there at all. If there's nothing there, there's nothing there. Okay? So a lot of people think they've given themselves to Jesus Christ. And they're going to heaven. And then they're going to stand in front of God and say, why can't I get in? I gave, my, I, I gave myself to you. He said, you didn't give me anything. You didn't give me your heart. You rejected everything my word told you to do. When you reject things Jesus told you to do, you are anti-Christ. You are against God. Understand that. Let me show you something. First John 5, 3. If you love God, y'all, you give your heart to him. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome to you. 1 John 5, 3. Again, if you really love God, you will keep his commandments. Keep. He uses words like keep, walk, abide, and do. And then he's even more straight up than that with you. John 14, 15. He gets more straight up than that. More sure so you can't even get more straight up than this. John 14, 15. <clears throat> if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Where are you going to keep them at? In your back pocket? We're going to keep them somewhere where the world can't see it. Where are you going to keep them at? Keep means do, y'all. Keep means do. Keep means obey. Okay? But understand this. Salvation comes through accepting Jesus Christ, not from just your head. You got a brain up here, and you got a mouth. Okay? When you say, Jesus is Lord of my life, I'm saved, but you're not doing anything, that he told you to do throughout his word. You're not even trying to abide by his commandments, y'all. Well, it's just coming from your mouth. It means nothing. Because your heart's not in it. When your heart is in it, there will be evidence. No doubt about that. You will be doing this. Obeying God's commandments. You will be keeping. You will be walking in. You will be abiding in. That means you will be doing God's commandments. And what did he say? What did he say? 
that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. They will not burden you. You won't grumble and complain about having to obey God. But let me tell you something. As we do these works, your faith, your trust, your belief, all same thing is an action. There's action behind it. We do what Jesus did. We are to be Christ-like. Or it doesn't mean anything. You People can say they're Christians all day long, y'all. And they do. But Jesus said there's a wide road of people going straight to hell because they deceive themselves. They think, oh, that's the Old Testament covenant. I don't got to do that. You know what? What did Jesus just tell you? What did he tell you? Keep my commandments. Do you believe Jesus is God? Do you believe Jesus is God? Who wrote the commandments, y'all? God. Do you believe Jesus Christ is God when he said, I am? I am he is God. He didn't step out in this world as a human to change his mind on what his commandments were. No. He is the commandments. We do whatever he says to do. He only came in the flesh to get you back. See, we born into sin. We are sinners, all of us. He's the only way back. Does that mean we ignore his commandments? No, he just told you straight up, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, obey my commandments. Abide in me, and I in you. How many times he got to tell you, y'all? You don't just disregard his, his commandments because you don't like them, or you think because that's, that's another God. No, it's not that way, y'all. It's not that way. And we, don't, we got a lot of works to do. We sure do. It's called sanctification. Your, your, your desire to give your life to Jesus Christ coming from your heart when it comes from your heart, it means you want to be this new person. Not just, I want to go to heaven, so I ain't going to do nothing about it. You know, it's not that easy, y'all. We give our heart to him because we want to be this new person. We want to be Christ-like. And Christ did an awful lot. Now we get saved. We give that decision to him. Now we get sanctified and we start becoming this new person by obeying God's commands, by doing the things he said to do. He said in many ways, you get fruits on your tree. If you start seeing things you do, you'll start seeing more stuff you do. He compares that to more fruit busting out on your tree. Okay, if you don't do anything, he said your branch will take it, throw it off. It ain't worth nothing. It never came to him in the first place, not from their heart. Okay, so we do these works. The Bible says your faith that you're supposed to have, your faith without works is dead. He wants you to understand this. Now, we do these works not because we're earning anything. We got a lot of work to do, y'all. Sanctification. Not because we're earning stuff from God, but because we owe it to him. You already owe Jesus a debt. You owe him a debt. So you should not grumble about obeying God's commandments in any way, shape, or form. If you're grumbling about obeying God's commandments, then there's a problem between you and God already. And you need to stop right now and figure that out and make it right with Jesus Christ, y'all. Because we really are truly, truly running out of time here. Let's do that again. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. So you got to decide, did you really give your life to Jesus Christ? Or did you just give him your mouth? Did you give your life to him or did you give him your mouth? Because when you give your life to Jesus Christ, there's total surrender. You surrender. There's, there's more stuff involved in believing, y'all. There's quite much involved in faith, in believing. Faith, believing. It's not just your words, your fancy words. Let's look at James 4, 7. <clears throat> therefore submit to god resist the devil he will flee from you draw near to god how do you draw near to god y'all you study his word you know his word you do the things he told you to do he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded you get closer to god y'all if you're gonna really give your mouth to him give your heart to him Get closer to him. Basically, you choose, y'all. You choose how much of God you want in your life. You choose it. All right? 
God is more than eager to draw close to you if you will let him. Okay? But part of choosing is believing and faith. And part of that is trusting, loving, honoring, respecting, surrendering, abiding in, obeying God. It's action. Faith is action. Believe is action. It's all action. Let's look at John 8.31. Give me a minute to get there. John 8.31. We should be well past this, but I know some of you new people, you need to know this. You need to know it. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. He's talking to you too. If you abide in my word, that doesn't mean just sit down and reading it. Y'all, abiding means doing. What does it mean to abide in Jesus? Just sitting down and reading his word every now and then? Is that abiding in him? How about just listening to a video every night? Is that abiding in him? No, abiding in him is obeying him and not grumbling about it. You're seeking him. You're taking your time of day. He's on your mind all the time. You take the word, you study it. You know God. You learn what he's telling you, what he wants you to do, what he, what he has you here for. You're learning. And then as you see the things he tells you to do, help the poor. Reach out to the widow. Help these people. Help your church. The kingdom of God. Forgive people that hurt you. Do You see it. You can't miss it if you're studying his word. You start doing those things. Obeying God's commandments. They're just the same for you today as they was back then. It ain't no different God. It's the same God. And his word never changes. I'm the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow, and forever. Same God, y'all. Jesus told you so many times throughout his word, if you abide in me, you'll obey me. If you love me, you will obey me. Obey my commandments. Keep my commandments. I mean, how many more times he got to tell you? I know Satan has people's eyes blinded, y'all. But let me tell you, we got a lot to do. Yes, you do. If you're not doing these things, you need to rededicate yourself to Jesus Christ because you never gave yourself to him, period. Okay, because when you give your heart to Jesus Christ, there will be change in you and you will become a doer of his word. You will become sanctified. You will become righteous. And it's a process, but you will be coming more and more and more every day like Jesus Christ. He didn't spend 33 years on this earth just to uh, do you a favor. He spent 33 years of his life on this earth to show you what you need to do. What he did. Do the things he did. And you can only do that if you know him. So that's what trusting him is. If you trust him, y'all, then you will know, you will trust that Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. You'll trust that. Do you trust him? Okay. So let me explain something about these works. You got works to do, but it ain't that God's going to stand here and give, he will reward you. But to tell you the truth, we don't deserve any rewards. We don't deserve to do to get anything like that. All right, we're very blessed that he offers this to us, but we do the works because he asked us to, because he told us to. We do the works because we owe it to him. We owe him. Okay? You don't just sit around on your bomb and do nothing, thinking you're gonna fly float into heaven. Don't work that way. He says it's a very wide road to destruction, and many. People that say they're Christians go in the wide road to destruction because he said they're deceived. They don't know the difference between believing from their head and believing from their heart. They'll say excuses like, oh, that's the Old Testament covenant. That's a different God. They'll make excuses like that. They don't know Jesus, y'all. They don't know Jesus. Or they'll give you a scripture and they have no clue what that scripture really saying to them. You got to know Jesus, y'all. Okay, and he saved my life 17 years ago to stand here and explain to you what it means to believe. You know how many people through my mouth that Jesus is going to help get on that narrow road? A lot. 
That's what I'm here for. All right. So understand that you got things to do. You ain't been obeying God's commandments. So I suggest you get on it and start falling in love and honoring and obeying Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's turn to you real quick. Uh, John 14. 15. If you love me. Now listen, y'all. If you love me, you don't think you got to honor God. Jesus is saying this. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's just as straight up as it could be. What makes you think you don't have to honor, respect, surrender, and abide and obey Jesus Christ? Satan makes you think that. Satan makes you think just because you, Satan, y'all, believes. The believing you have to do, the faith you have to have is honoring God, trusting him, knowing what he told you is truth, honor him, respect him, and know that you owe him something back. So you will obey him. Understand that Satan believes the way most people do. Satan believes in Jesus Christ. Head, he knows it's true. He knows it. He'll tell you. Yeah, I know who Jesus is. Sure. Does that mean he's saved? No, because his heart's far from it. Far from God. Most people believe like that with their head, y'all. Say, yes, I'm a Christian. Nothing, nothing, nothing is coming from their heart. They ain't helping no poor people. They certainly ain't honoring God's commandments. They could care less about God's commandments. Who wants to help the church grow? Nobody. Who wants to help poor people? Not that many people. Who wants to help the kingdom of God? Not many people. Who wants to help the widow? Not many people. Who can forgive people that hurt him really, really bad? Not many people. Who honor God's words and keeps his commandments, y'all? Not many people. So who really loves God? Not many people. The road's very narrow, y'all, because it's difficult. Because most people don't know what it means to believe. Well, we're here to tell you today what it means to believe. And that if you have been ignoring God's commandments, thinking you ain't got to follow them because it's another God is old. When Jesus Christ took them commandments, he had to abide by them. It's his word. And then he took them into his body. All those, thou shalt not kill, steal, but he took it all into him. And then he took your sins all into him. And now it's all Jesus. You still honor and obey God because that's what Jesus said to do. Obey me. He told you what to do. He told you what to do for people. He told you what to do for his kingdom. He told you what to do for your preachers and your teachers. He told you what to do for your brothers and sisters. He told you what to do for your enemies. Now you do them if you love them. All right, I'll see y'all at Google Meets tonight. R-A-O-U-B-O-F-M-V-I, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We start at 8.30, but please be in the room before 8.30. We open at 8. All right, in Jesus' name, if you haven't uh, really given your life to Jesus, give your heart to him, y'all, right now. And now study. Study. All right, thanks some of y'all for what you've done. Thanks for helping this channel and, and what we're doing and everything else. Thank y'all so much. Check out the website, JesusDoers.com. Jesus is leading you here on this channel to that narrow road, y'all. Open your eyes, open your ears, open your heart. In Jesus' name, God bless you.